I'm gonna show you how to import CAD elevations and plans into SketchUp so you can build a 3D model from them. So everything in this video is actually from my book, SketchUp to Layout Second Edition. You can find it on Amazon or you can use the link in the description below to get the ebook for free when you buy the paperback. So let's take a look at the CAD file we're gonna use in this example. So we just have a basic uh, four elevations and three floor plans. We have the basement here, the first floor, the second floor, and then we have each elevation. So this can import into SketchUp really easily. There are certain entities that won't be imported. They'll just be ignored. So that's gonna be any text and dimensions and things like that. Now, as far as like the type of cleanup that you need to do before you import a CAD file, it's kind of up to you. But I would say the most important thing is to make sure that you're drawing accurately in CAD before bringing it into SketchUp because SketchUp is going to be 100% accurate. So even if you have dimensions set to round up to a certain interval in CAD, SketchUp is going to actually read the true dimension. So just looking at some quick dimensions here, we do have some measurements that are not really pinned to a whole number. So, you know, two feet, two and 13 sixteenths. And this is actually rounded in CAD. So this isn't exactly to the 16th of an inch. Then we have other instances where it is accurate. You know, it says half inch. So for the half inch sheetrock, that's measured accurately. There's certain measurements that are, you know, two foot eight for the door, things like that. So I'm going to show you as we import this into SketchUp, how some of these discrepancies can cause problems in SketchUp. So this is a real world example. It's not a perfect CAD file, but let's go ahead and import it into SketchUp. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new SketchUp model. And I always recommend this whenever you're importing CAD, you wanna start from a blank model. Even if you've already started the project, you wanna start from a blank SketchUp model. So to import CAD, you're gonna to go to File, Import. We'll select the CAD file. Now, if you don't see the CAD file here, just make sure you have either all supported types selected here or the specific AutoCAD file type selected right here. Because otherwise it just won't show up in the list if you don't have that. So I'm gonna select this one here. And under Options, there are a few different options you can toggle. So merge coplanar faces, orient faces consistently, importing materials. I don't recommend preserving the drawing origin if you're just importing a building or something like that. This does become more important if you're trying to coordinate multiple CAD imports on like an entire project site where you need to kind of maintain that origin every time you import something. But for just a single building, I would recommend leaving that unchecked. And also most times selecting model units is gonna be the best way to import your CAD file and have it scale accurately. So we can just leave it like that. So we'll click okay, we'll click import. It'll have a progress bar, depending on how big the CAD file is, it might take a little while. And then we have the uh, results. So just looking at this really quick, you can see the certain entities that were ignored and which ones were imported. So once we click close, it'll load and we have the CAD file imported. Now you can see just judging off of the scale figure down here that it looks like it was imported to scale, but you would always wanna check it. You, you don't wanna just trust that it's built to scale and you start modeling and then you realize everything's off. So to check that, you just grab the tape measure tool right here or tap T on your uh, keyboard for the keyboard shortcut. And then you can just measure any known distance. So this I know is a two by six wall, so I can see that it's five and a half inches. So it was imported correctly. But again, if your CAD file isn't trustworthy or you, you're not sure how accurate it was, you do need to just kind of maybe check a couple of places and, and just make sure that it's imported the way you want it. All right, so before we start moving and arranging this into place, let's just take a look at how SketchUp has imported 
this information. So if we open the outliner panel here, which if you don't see any of these panels I mentioned, you can just go to window default tray and enable them right here. So we can see we have two components in our model currently. So the default scale figure right here, which I'll delete and the CAD file right here is automatically converted into a component. And then under that is everything that was imported. So in this case, the CAD file was made up of entirely just loose entities with the exception of this scale figure block. So blocks get converted into SketchUp components and we can see we have the scale figure in a few different places here. Now, one quick tip, I do have a keyboard shortcut, Shift S, and that is Zoom Selected. And so you can find that in the Edit menu if you go to Edit, Component, and Zoom Selection. So I have a custom keyboard shortcut assigned to that. I find that really helpful because you can click on something in the Outliner panel and then just tap Shift S and it'll zoom right to that object. You can also actually find that right here. If you right click on the object in the outliner panel, you can go zoom selection. So we have several of these uh, blocks that were converted to components. Um, but other than that, everything is loose entities. Now curves will be converted into either arcs or circles. Of course, everything in SketchUp is segmented, so you're not going to have a true curved entity. It's gonna be made up of a circle or arc or curve entity in SketchUp. Now, what about layers? So layers get imported and converted into tags, and we can actually visualize how this was imported a little bit better because tags do have color assignments here and we can click color by tag. Now, initially you might think, okay, that didn't work because everything's still black, but that's because the current style we're using has the edges. So if I go to style, the styles panel, edit, click on edges here, and you go down here to color, you'll notice that the style currently has all edges being colored the same. So this is all same. So I can change this to a different color and now all the edges are gonna change to this color. Now there's another option in this drop-down menu uh, by material. So if I select by material, now you'll see that because we have color by tag enabled, the material color is overridden by the tag color. And in return, since we changed the edge color to be by material, all the edges show the corresponding tag. Now, if we take a quick look at some of these floor plans, we can see that the CAD file isn't really well organized. We have some entities that are on one tag, but then we have other entities of the same type that are on just the one tag. So in this case, you know, the tags aren't gonna be super helpful for us just because the CAD file wasn't really organized that well uh, when it was created. So there's two things you can do if you want to. You can select all of the imported tags, right click, delete, and then just assign all of those entities to the untagged or basically remove the tag assignment from all of those entities. But another option that might be better is to just select all of them and then nest them into a tag folder. And so we can call this CAD import. Now down the road, if you import another CAD file, all of those tag assignments will just be inherited and nested in this folder for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset the style and start organizing these floor plans and elevations so we can start building the model. The first thing you'll wanna do is create groups around each one of these. So I have a keyboard shortcut for Shift G to create groups. So I'm just clicking and dragging with the select tool to create a selection box over each one of these and shift G to make the group. Now, another thing I'm gonna do real quick is just change the camera angle to parallel projection and standard view top, just so everything is aligned and we'll group the rest of these. Now, this I think is the roof edge perimeter. We might not use that, but uh, we'll just leave it there for now. Now, at this point, what you wanna do is move and rotate each of the floor plans and elevations so they kind of wrap around where you're going to be building the model. So let's go ahead and start with the floor plans. So I'm going to grab this basement plan and just kind of bring it closer to the origin. And I'm gonna just grab these as well. So M for the move tool, click once, 
click again just to get it closer. And we'll wanna label the floor plans as well. We're gonna label the elevations eventually as well, but right now I don't really know for sure which elevation is which, so I'm gonna just leave those unlabeled at this point. So I know this is the basement, so I'll just call this the basement. And then this one is going to be the first floor. And this is going to be important when we start stacking and arranging these, it's gonna be difficult to know what we're selecting. So we can go to the outliner panel and have a better idea of which group we're actually selecting. Okay, so now we wanna find a common corner or point between these two floor plans in order to align them vertically. So I'm gonna pick this corner right here and you wanna make sure you're zooming in to make sure you're you know, selecting the precise point. You know, I don't wanna select the sheathing, I wanna select the framing, or you know, it doesn't matter which one you select, you just need to be consistent and make sure you know you're selecting the right one each time. So I've got the move tool, I've got the first floor selected, and I'm gonna click right there to start the move, and then I'm gonna zoom out and bring it right down to the basement right here. And so you can see how everything aligned and everything is looking pretty good. So I'm just going around and kind of double checking to see if we have any misalignment. So it looks like we might have a misalignment right here on this wall. I'm gonna leave it there for now and just take a look at some of these other walls. And so I'm just hiding and unhiding the first floor to just see how it compares to the basement. All right, so now we're gonna go and do the same thing with the second floor. So this is the second floor right here. We'll go ahead and name that second floor. And I'm going to grab, well now I have this issue because I don't have that outside corner. So let me, let me see if we can align this corner right here. So we'll zoom out. We'll come down to this corner right here and drop that right in place. All right, now I'm just gonna temporarily elevate each of these plans to an arbitrary number just to get some sort of separation between each one. And then once we get the elevations in place, we'll find the exact level that they need to be at. So I'm going to switch back to uh, perspective camera angle and I'll grab the first and second floor. I'll grab the move tool, click once to start the move, tap the up arrow to lock the blue axis, click again and type in 10 foot enter. And then I will select just the second floor this time and do the same thing and we'll just go another 10 feet enter. So now we have each plan separated, they're contained in their own group and they're labeled so we know which one is which. And now we just need to bring the elevations over. So I'm gonna select all of these and just bring them over like this. And we can rotate all of these up in one move since they're all selected. We can grab the rotate tool and we'll click and drag to orient the red axis. Then we'll click once, we'll bring it up to 90 degrees and click again. And then you just take each one of these individually and rotate and move them into position. So this one is going right here on this face. So I'll grab the move tool, I'll bring it over. And the move tool has these rotation grips kind of built right into groups and components. So you can just grab one of those little red grips and rotate a group or component. So let's go ahead and do that for each one of these. I'm just placing them kind of arbitrarily for right now. All right, so we have them placed kind of arbitrarily right now, and the next step is to choose one elevation that you want to become kind of your keystone master reference elevation uh, that you can align the other elevations and floor plans to. So I'm going to pick this elevation right here, and we're gonna start by getting it aligned to the basement. So we can hide the first and second floor if we want, just to kind of make it easier to identify things. And we're basically going to work one axis at a time. It doesn't matter which one you start with. You're gonna do the height with the blue axis. You're gonna do the green axis and the red axis. So I'm gonna grab the move tool. I'm gonna click 
the side of the foundation here and move this along the green axis and snap it to the floor plan here. And for the height, we'll go ahead and grab this elevation mark right here, which if we look back at the CAD file, uh, we can see this elevation has these marks here for the different for the different floor heights. So we can see this line in SketchUp for the finished lower level. So if we go back to SketchUp, we can see this one right here is the finished basement level. So for the height, we'll go ahead and snap to that. So now what we can do is select the elevation on the opposite side of the building, and we can find a common point between those two and align them with each other. So I'm gonna align that elevation with this wall right here, and we can use the ridge to align the height. So I can snap to this one right here. And then we just do the same thing with the other two elevations. And then to finalize the floor plan heights, we can refer back to this original elevation. We'll unhide the second floor, and then we'll move this to snap to this elevation marker right here. Or actually that was, this is the first floor. The second floor goes up here. And the first floor goes down here. All right, and so once you have this set up, you can rename the elevations as you please. And you can kind of double check everything, make sure it's aligned properly. And again, if you have a CAD file that's you know not 100% accurate, that's gonna show up in the model. So you're gonna have to you know make those decisions on how you want the final model to be dimensioned and uh, you're gonna have to work with what you have. So that's gonna do it for this video. Again, if you wanna purchase my book, SketchUp to Layout Second Edition, it covers all of, basically everything we talked about in this video is native SketchUp tools. So we talked about working with dimensions, creating different types of selections, moving and rotating objects. So this is gonna cover all of the basics in SketchUp and go into layout as well. So again, you can find it on Amazon or you can use the link in the description. Go to sketchuptolayout.com and you can get the paperback and get the ebook as a free bonus. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.